I am chosen by God. But do we really believe it? I am chosen by God. Do you believe it? And if you say, I have been chosen by God, then you rule out the accident of your existence. You, maybe your parents didn't plan for you to come into this world. By mistake it happened for them. But it was not a mistake in the hand of God. He had chosen us to be here. We are not here by accident. Nor did we choose to be here. Is dunya mein aane ke liye humne bhi nirane nahi kiya hai. God created us in his own image. And we are here. Our parents may have made a mistake. But that was not the mistakes of God. We are not here by accident. We are not here by your choice also. Sometimes we think, yeah, I'm here because I chose to be. No. If God did not choose, our choices mean nothing. Somehow in the sovereign plan of God, in his divine wisdom, he created certain conditions in our life that would help us to be here today. So we chose the things we chose because God was shepherding us, guiding us to make those choices. So that's a very, very powerful statement in the Bible that God chose me. I am not here because something bad happened. I'm not here because my parents made mistakes. I'm not here because I chose to be here. I'm here because my God chose me before the foundation of the world. That's what the Bible says. We were chosen by God before the foundations of the world. Is dunya banane se pehle hi bhi parmeshwar ne hume chun liya hai aur isliye hum is dunya mein hai kyunki parmeshwar ne hume chuna hai. हमारे माँ बाप की गलती नहीं है और हम खुद निर्णय करके यहाँ नहीं आए हैं द गॉड हु क्रिएटेड द हेवन्स इन द अर्थ चोज जस्ट टू बी हियर एंड दैट्स व्हाई वी आर हियर टुडे हाउ डू वी नो दैट जीसस सेड इन जॉन चैप्टर 15-16 आई यू डिड नॉट चूज मी वेरी क्लियरली ही मेक्स एन एम्फेटिक स्टेटमेंट यू डिड नॉट चूज मी बट आई चूज यू एंड अपॉइंटेड यू If you are a Christian today, it is not because you chose, because God chose you. Not now, before the foundations of the world. He knew there would be a person called Puya. He, he would be born in Mizoram, in this family, in that situation. His name was written before the foundations of the world. Therefore, in human history, in human time, in his time, he responded to that choice of God. And you responded to... To that choice of God and that's why you are here. So if you register that. I am not here by accident. I am not here because I chose to be here. I am here because of God. I am here because God ordained me to be here. The word appointed. There is a deliberate. Minute details of your life. Have been appointed by God. So aapke sare chote chote baato mein bhi. Parmeshwar ne purb kaal mein nirnay kiya hai. कि आप इस समय इस जगह पर होंगे और आपके जीवन से परमेश्वर कुछ करना चाहता है सो so, डेविड कहता है साम 139 में फॉर यू क्रिएटेड माय इन मोस्ट बिंग ये आपका व्यक्तित्व तो, पर्सनालिटी आप कौन सा प्रकार के व्यक्तित्व तो वाले आदमी हैं यू क्रिएटेड इन माय इन मोस्ट बिंग आवर कैरेक्टर्स आवर नेचर आवर एटीट्यूड्स उसके साथ साथ यू नीट मी टूगेदर इन माई मदर्स ये फिजिकल बॉडी हाउ डू वी लुक मेल फीमेल हाइट द कलर ऑल योर फिजिकल फिजिकल फीचर्स आर ऑल्सो द हैंडी वर्क ऑफ गॉड ही सेज आई प्रेज यू बिकॉज आई एम फियरफुली एंड वंडरफुली मेड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टूडे आई वॉन्ट यू टू रजिस्टर इन योर हेड दैट गॉड हैज हिज हैंड behind your life not now not when you were born but even before this creation in ephesians chapter 1 paul says he chose us before the foundations of the world is duniya banane se pehle hi parmeshwar ne apne purva gyan mein hamare sare cheezon ko nirdharit kar diya tha aur nirnay kiya tha ki i will bring this person at this time in this place and i will bring gospel near to that person and i give i will give that person the freedom to choose now guwahati me 30 lakhs log hai there are 3 million people living in and around guwahati they were chosen by god but at the same time in his divine choice he has given us freedom to choose as well 
that gospel will come to Guwahati and they will have a choice if they choose to believe in me then this will be their life if they refuse to believe me then this will be their life god has preordained our life in that preordination he has also preordained our free choices so aaj hum yahan hai kyunki humne yeshu masih ko vishwas karne ka choice nirnay liya hai aaj bahut sare log yahan nahi hai church mein nahi aate kyunki un logon ne yeshu masih ko inkar kar diya hai agar wo yeshu masih ko swikar karte to parmeshwar ne jo acche raste yahan pe chuna hai वहां पे चलते इफ दे रिजेक्ट द गॉस्पल जब जो लोग यीशु मसीह को इनकार करते हैं उनके लिए नरक के रास्ते भी परमेश्वर ने निर्धारित कर दिया है इट्स अ फ्री चॉइस नाउ गॉड हैज ओर्डेन्ड एंड ही हैज गिवन यू फ्रीडम टू चूज विच वे यू वांट टू गो सो वी वे चोजन बाय गॉड इन आ मदर्स वूम्ब दैट्स वेन आई से योर पेरेंट्स मे हैव मेड मिस्टेक यू मे बी यू आर बोर्न आउट ऑफ वेट लक but god did not make mistake he knew exactly how you were formed he knew why you were formed that we see why did he choose then if god chose me before the foundations of the world when i was born the day i was born my father and mother said this child does not belong to our family they rejected me yes in a human mind I was not planned by human mind but God had planned about my life before even I was conceived So if God had chosen me then why did he choose me If God had chosen you why did he choose you Let us read 1 Peter 2:9 But you are a chosen people he emphasizes again and again you are a chosen people a royal priesthood a holy nation God's special possession that means special people that you may declare praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light in other word God had chosen us to declare his praises Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God the earth and the heavens and the stars and the moons the creation declares the glory of God but it is the human who instead of declaring the glory of god they are worshiping the creation we were supposed to declare the glory of god the the reason god made man was to declare his glory just the way the heavens declare the glory of god man was created to declare the glory of god the praise of his name but today man has turned against god and he rejected the glory of god in roman chapter 1 and he started to worship the things that god created he rejected the creator and started to give glory to the creation so i i'm here because god chose me why did he choose me so that i will declare praises of his name you are here because you were chosen before the foundations of the world regardless of where you were born god has had his hand in your life why are you here why did he choose so that you will declare his glory his praises you will worship him the more we declare the praises of god the more we worship god the perfecter we become the the more whole human being we become the healthy human being we become our thinking becomes clear our our heart becomes healthier even our bodies become become much more healed healthy and even attractive i can say okay if a person worships god that person's physical outlook will be attractive a lady will be beautiful a man will be handsome a worshiping person becomes an attractive person even in our physical outlook God's holy spirit begin to manifest his glory through us so regardless of how we look in our future but we reflect the glory of god we become attractive wherever we go people like us 
wherever we go we draw people's attention in a positive way because we declare the praises of his name he chose us to glorify god he chose us to praise the name of jesus before the foundations of the world and therefore a christian who is fulfilling the original purpose god had created him uh, for him will be reflecting the glory of god even from our physical bodies our hands our speech our eyesight our mouth our hearing our actions our feet our hand all will be declaring the glory of god because he created us to declare his praises amen we are chosen why to declare the praises of his name the only reason we are here on this earth is to glorify god i often say even i told you maybe a few times ago and last week i was teaching in a class and i told the student why did you believe in christ and then after you believed in christ why are you here suppose you went to take baptism and you you were baptized in water or river or tank or whatever and you if the pastor kept you there for 3 minutes in under the water what will happen you will wake up in heaven okay i baptized puya today and i put him under water for 3 minutes and then i leave him he will wake up in heaven why not do that why do you live on this earth after you take baptism why not directly go to heaven because jesus wants us to declare his glory his praise that's the only reason he has kept us here if our lives are not bringing glory and honor to jesus something is wrong then how shall we declare his glory how shall we proclaim this praise on this earth let us read isaiah 61 verse 1 to 3 He said the spirit of sovereign lord is on me because the lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor he has sent me to bind up the broken hearted to proclaim freedom from the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our god to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of spirit of despair they will be called oaks of righteousness a planting of the lord for the display of his splendor all these things we shall do to proclaim or to display the splendor of god why did he choose to to declare his praises how do we declare the praises of god on this earth number 1 to proclaim good news to the poor here in isaiah when the prophet isaiah was prophesying he was talking about the future coming of the messiah and this is the the messiah would say like that and in luke chapter 4 verse 18 and 19 jesus takes this passage and he reads that and says today this passage has been fulfilled if this was fulfilled in the life of jesus then it is equally fulfilled in the life of those who believe so those of us who believe in the lord jesus christ those of us who believe that god chose us we can say the spirit of sovereign lord is on us now this is an old testament language now in the new testament the spirit of the lord is not on us anymore the spirit of the lord is in us in the old testament god's holy spirit did not come in every human being God's holy spirit came on people for a certain time for a certain purpose and after that he left. For example, the spirit of God came upon David, the spirit of God came upon Solomon uh, Solomon and left Samuel and uh, Eliza, Eliza, the spirit of God would come upon them for a purpose. But in the New Testament, God said, I'm going to build a new temple and I'm going to put my spirit inside that temple and that is you and I. the church is the new temple you are the temple the spirit of god is now inside of us the day we accept jesus christ he cleanses us from all our sinfulness and then we ask the holy spirit to come the spirit of god comes in our hearts and he lives 
in us. We are now the temple of God. If the powerful Holy Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in our hearts, in our minds, that means this is the purpose for that indwelling power of the Holy Spirit is to preach the good news to the poor. What kind of people are poor? Not necessarily physical poor, yes. In the Gospel of Luke and in Isaiah we see Jesus did go to the poor and the rejected and the outcast of the society and he lifted them up. Yes, physical poor also need to hear the gospel. But here, this is a spiritual poor people. There are many, many people who have a lot of money, but they are poor. They are poor in the spirit. We need to preach the gospel. How can you declare the praises of the name of Jesus? By preaching the gospel. To proclaim good news to the poor. Physical poor, spiritual poor mentally poor, socially poor, people are in dire poverty. Money is not the sign of wealth. People may have lots of money, but they cannot eat the food they like. People may have huge building, but nighttime they can't sleep without sleeping tablets. They may have a huge family, but the family is full of conflict all the time. Quarrels and fights. People are poor. And we, the chosen one, have the solution to their problems. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel is that Jesus Christ has come to die for their sins. And he rose from the dead. And today if they accept him as their Lord and Savior, their poverty he will take upon himself. And he will give his richness, his wealth. You know, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9, Jesus became poor so that through his poverty we might become rich, rich in joy, rich in peace, rich in harmony at home, rich in our body, health in our body, peace in our mind, joy in our heart, even blessing in our hand. That's the kind of life Jesus wants to give to the poor. How will they hear if you, not, if you and I don't go and tell? If we don't take gospel very seriously in this city, they will not take it. They will not believe it. Uh, Alan was writing a paper and he asked us to fill certain forms. And the title was, Why the Church in Guwahati is not prospering? Why the Christians in Guwahati are not influencing the non-Christian neighbor? Because the Christians in Guwahati are not living a committed life. They are living a compromised life. They compromise with their faith. They compromise with their morality. And now so many Christians are drunkard. Can you believe? How can I say to a, a Hindu man who is an alcoholic, come to Jesus, when I see in the church people who are drunk? How can I say a Muslim drug addict to come to the church, Jesus can set you free when a Christian community is destroyed by drug addiction? The Christian in Guwahati are not living committed life. They are living a compromised life. They are not declaring the praises. They are not doing what God has called them to do. So when the Christmas comes, they come to go, uh, church. When Bihu comes, they go back to their own old traditional lifestyle. They don't care worshipping or doing things that are contrary to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to declare the praises. How do we do to preach the gospel? To tell the people of our city, people of our families, that if they do not believe in Jesus Christ, their future is just dangerous. They are in danger of losing their life for all eternity. But if they believe in the gospel, they will have eternal life. Their sins will be forgiven. First of all, secondly, how do you preach the gospel? Many times we say to the people, come to church, you will receive blessing. We say, come to church, you will receive healing. Come to church, you will be prosperous or you will be happy or your family will have peace. Those are the side effect. They are not the main purpose of coming to church. When we preach the gospel, make sure that we tell them that you're a sinner, you need a savior. Your sins are the reason for your suffering. And when you come to church, 
don't expect your suffering to go away if you are not willing to repent from your sin because jesus came for the first and the primary purpose to save us from our sins that is the gospel we are sinners we need a savior only in christ do we see a solution to my problem of sin and therefore when i believe in the lord jesus christ with all my heart for the forgiveness of my sin then what happens then i may receive healing along the way then i may prosper along the way then my family will be restored but if my sin problem is not dealt with all other blessings are temporary relief it's like i've been having constant chronic headache if i take sitamol it it is a temporary relief only proclaim the gospel god chose us before the foundations of the world to proclaim his praises how do we proclaim the praises to his name by preaching the gospel to the poor secondly he has sent me to bind up the broken hearted broken hearted means the world is in suffering people are broken inside family is broken children are broken marriages are breaking relationships are breaking new new kind of sicknesses and diseases are coming people are losing their livelihood governments are turning against them now india would is after the independence india was known as a land of gandhis land of peace land of tolerance land where there is freedom to do whatever you want to do the western people were so attracted to india because there was this thinking that hinduism provides us unlimited freedom but now society is turning against each other india is becoming intolerant nation people are broken governments are breaking down societies are breaking down northeast is known to be a christian part of india but you see how many time travel clashes one tribe against another tribe racism so powerfully influencing this society here people are broken but we have a solution that is if we bring the gospel to these broken hearted then we have a savior who can mend their broken heart as well we need to go out how do we bend the broken heart we need to not only speak the gospel with our mouth we need to show with our actions सुसमाचार केवल मुंह से प्रचार करना नहीं हाथ से दिखाना भी है प्यार केवल मुंह से बोलना नहीं हाथ से दिखाना है वी हैव टू डू समथिंग दैट डेमोन्स्ट्रेट दैट वी ट्रूली ट्रूली लव देम इफ आई से जीजस लव्स यू पिया बट आई डू नथिंग फॉर हिम देन वॉट एम आई सेंग इज मीनिंग लेस टू हिम but if i say jesus loves you puya and then when he is in trouble and if i do something that proves what i say was true then he will believe what i said you and i need to find ways to touch the broken lives how can i prove to this person that jesus is truly the savior he is really the one who loves this person and jesus said i not only have to preach the gospel to this person i need to also bind up the broken hearted how can we bind the people who are broken hearted as i in the church we welcome everyone whether drunkard or addicted or prostitute whoever these are broken people nobody would like to go into alcoholism nobody would like to be a addicted person nobody would like to go into prostitution nobody would like to be a criminal but somehow something happened whether they were in childhood someone abused them some someone betrayed them somewhere the human trust is broken the heart is broken and because of the brokenness inside they choose the wrong path in life but we need to heal them we need to pray god from hope church we want to preach the gospel and then we want to mend the broken hearted how shall we do ask god wisdom maybe we have to rest- like we we collect the handful of rice these days we are not seeing we have we need to we bring that handful of rice then when we see some families here struggling we take that handful of rice and we say god bless you this is for you what happens these families who are struggling they know yeah this 
they really care for us. We are demonstrating the preaching of the gospel from the mouth with the action of the hand so that their brokenness can be healed. Thirdly, freedom from the captives and release from darkness. That means there are many people who are in prison, in bondage. Not a physical prison, but spiritual prison. An alcoholism is a prison. Addiction is a prison. Anger is a prison. Hate is a prison. We need to bring people out of those prison. Set them free. How can you proclaim the glory of God? By preaching the gospel. By mending the broken hearted. By listening to those. There are so many ladies or men who have hurt inside. They want to share their problem with someone but no one is there to listen to. If we take time to listen to them, if they feel confident enough to share their struggles with us, only by listening we can heal many people's broken heart. And then freedom from the prisons by interceding on their behalf, by praying and fasting and asking God to break those chains that put them in bondage. We set them free from the darkness, from the prison. That is why God has called us here. We are not here simply, we sit in the church and praise God, hallelujah and go home. Yes, that is wonderful response. But then God has also given us the purpose, the plan. And that is to take this freedom that we have. For example, we were one time poor, but today we are rich in Christ. Because we accepted the gospel. One time we were also broken hearted. There was no one to listen to us. But today Christ has healed our heart. He hears our prayers. He hears our struggles. He sees our tears. The Bible says he wipes away our tears as well. And then we were also captive of various kind. We were in darkness. We didn't know what was happening. But today we are in freedom. We, we are in the light. All we got to do. To proclaim the gospel and demonstrate the gospel that you love them and God's Holy Spirit will come and set them free. When you preach the gospel to others, what happens? You become certain of your salvation. When you share the gospel to others, you are confident that you are saved by grace through faith. And your salvation becomes much more consolidated. You no longer live in doubt or fear. You don't come to church thinking whether God is angry. You come to church knowing that God is happy and excited to see me. Because the more we share the gospel, the more confident we become in our salvation. Then when we bind up the broken hearted, we experience healing. When you help someone to come out of his problem or her problem, you start experiencing healing. Healing. The Bible says, whatever you do to others, it's going to come back. Whatever you show, it will come back. Whatever we show, is going to come back. If you start healing others, you will experience healing. Your life will become whole and healed. When you help others to be free from the bondage, we experience freedom. And in doing so, we display God's splendor and that's why God we are chosen by God to proclaim the gospel so that we can display God's splendor and glory in the life of those who are saved if you share the gospel to a person who doesn't know Jesus Christ and if you bind that person's broken heart if you help that person to be free from addictions or bondage or hate soon that person begins to praise God. When he's praising God or she's praising God, the credit goes to you too because you brought that person. That means you are magnifying the praises of God. You were proclaiming at one time. You were praising God. But because you shared the gospel to someone, that person came, that person began to praise God. Now you are twice as much proclaiming the glory of God. For that God had chosen us. Isilie. परमेश्वर ने हमें चुना है